Today we're going to be looking at the GUI browser. The browser is one of the most important parts of GUI as it's the way you load sounds. And the browser occupies the lower left of the GUI interface and is split into two distinct sections. The left hand pane gives you access to drives and folders and the right hand pane shows you any files that can be loaded. At the top of the left hand pane you can see a line of text. This indicates the current browser location. Next to this, there's a small blue arrow, which when clicked, moves the browser up one level. We can now see the folders contained on this higher level. If we go back into the hit folder now, you can see the files that it contains displayed in the right hand pane. Sometimes the file names might be slightly truncated, as in the name of this kick. If this is the case and you want to see the full file name, simply grab the division tab at the bottom and drag left or right to adjust the ratio between the right and left panes. Now as you can see, the browser has four tabs, patterns, kits, hits and loops. Each of these allows you to load data into Guru in different ways. However, all the tabs have several things in common. The first of these is the favourites buttons, which are these two starred buttons here. The left hand button adds a folder location to your favourites list. When you click on it, Guru will prompt you to enter a name for the favourite. Now by clicking the right hand button, we can now access those favourites. And you can see here, it's displaying the hit folder. So if I navigate to a different folder now and click my favorites button, I can instantly jump back to that folder. There you go. To remove a favorite from the favorites list, simply click the show favorites button and then shift click on the favorite you want to remove. Now next to the favorites button is the auto button. This button works in conjunction with the up and down button and play stop button in the top left of the browser window. The auto button allows you to preview sounds in context, however the exact way that it works is dependent upon the tab you have selected. We'll be covering the auto button in more detail later. Let's look now at each of the four tabs that the browser has. First we're going to look at the hit tab. The hit tab allows you to import single hit sounds, for example, kicks, snares, hi-hats, and loops that you want to use as a single complete sound. Now there are two ways of loading sounds from the hit browser. Firstly, with the auto button turned off, simply grab the file that you want to load and drag it to a pad. When you release, Guru will load that. So if I put in a quick pattern so we can hear that that's running. Okay, so now if we grab another sound and drag it over, you'll hear that Guru will preview in context. And you can hear that that sound is now playing back with the current pattern. Now Guru won't actually load that sound until you release the mouse. If you don't want to load the sound, simply mouse away and drop the control anywhere else. If you do want to load the sound, simply drag over. When you're happy with it, release the mouse button. And you can see that sound's now loaded. The second way to load sound in is to use the auto function. With auto turned on, simply click the pad that you want to load to and then start previewing sounds. And you can hear there that Guru's previewing the sound in place. To step through to other sounds, you can use the up and down buttons to step sequentially through the sounds in the folder. And you can see how easy that is to use. When you've found a sound that you're happy with and you want to load, simply hit the OK button and the sound will be loaded. Alternatively, if you're previewing sound and you decide you don't like it, just hit the stop button, no sounds will be loaded your pattern will continue as normal. Okay, now we're going to look at the loops tab. Loops can be used in several distinct ways in Guru. You'll notice that just underneath the auto button in the loops tab is another button labeled both. This allows you to select the type of info that Guru will extract from your loop. 
This can either be just the audio samples, just the pattern and timing information, or both. Simply click this button to cycle through the different modes. If you right click on this button, you also get access to the slicing algorithm that's being used. You have four options. The first is fast. This is the quickest but least sensitive slicing algorithm. Next is enhanced, which is a medium sensitivity slice algorithm, which is of medium speed. Third, we have the high sensitivity option, which is the most accurate slicing in Guru, but also the slowest. Finally, there's equal sixteenths, which divides your loop into 16 equal segments. We're going to select high sensitivity for this demo. The auto button in the loops tab works in exactly the same way as in the hits tab, except that you have the score extraction enabled, the pattern will also preview. First, we will slice up a loop and extract both the audio and the timing. Let's try that. Now, as you can see, Guru's taken both the sounds and the timing information and is previewing them at the moment. So we want to load that, so I hit the OK button, and that's committed those changes. Now, I like the pattern, but the sounds aren't quite right. So if we set the slice type to audio only and then choose another loop, Guru will take the audio chunks out of that and play back the pattern that's playing with your new sounds. So you can hear there that it's previewing it in context. No sounds have actually been loaded. And notice also that the pattern has remained the same. Now those sounds aren't quite right, so let's use the up and down buttons to step to another sound. Yeah, that sounds good. So we hit the OK button, confirm the change. You can also, using the Loops tab, access single slices from within your loop. To do this, simply turn off the Auto button and click the small plus sign next to the file name. To extract a slice, simply click on it and drag it to the pad location that you'd like, in exactly the same way as with hits. Not liking that sound, so just move the mouse off and release. And you can hear that that's not been loaded. Okay, I'm now going to show you how to save the entire sample setup for that engine as a kit. So we hit the Kits tab, and on the right hand side you can see there's a Save button. If I click that, be asked to name it. Let's call that Guru Demo Kit. Hit Enter. And you can see that that's now showing up in the files view for the kits.